Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be the start of a new series that I'm starting on my channel called the Gap Year Diaries. And it's something that I had in my mind for the longest time. If you didn't know, hi, I'm Alex. I am a recent grad of McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota. And I literally just graduated like fresh two weeks ago. So still fresh in there but I am taking a gap year before I continue graduate school, hopefully next year. So you'll be able to see that entire process of applying and finding the right grad school. But yeah, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while just because I really love watching people find themselves. I mean, I only know who I am as a student and I'm kind of excited to explore this life of who Alex is as a person, as a creator, as a human being, and not as a student who is solely focused on grades and her career so anyway yes this is the first episode of the gap year diaries i thought this be a perfect place to start because i actually just accepted a job offer so during my gap year i'm going to be working for my nonprofit, for a nonprofit that I worked with during the school year in the semester, and I thought I would have a job, obviously, because I need to sustain my lifestyle, but also do a lot of things on the side, like just living my life and also creating content. So yeah, today is May 22nd, Sunday. It is the day before my 22nd birthday, so I also thought that was kind of poetic as well because I'm gonna turn 22 tomorrow. So it's just also not only just discovering my gap year, but discovering me as a 22 year old. So we'll see, I'll talk more about it tomorrow during um, the day of my birthday, I guess, and I'll vlog a little bit of that. But yeah, today's video is just gonna be the start of what I'm doing as a gap year person in my life now. So hope you're excited. everyone it is monday may 23rd and it is my birthday it is actually my twin sisters and i birthday we share a birthday obviously and it's just been nice to do that to share a birthday with someone because you know you're never alone and you can always celebrate with someone and be happy with someone so yeah it is my birthday i don't know i don't know how to feel i feel like as you get older birthdays become less and less of like a celebration and it's just like oh yeah the day's coming up so like when it comes close to your birthday you're like oh god it's coming up like we got to do something special but then by the time you get to your birthday you forget or like you're too tired to plan it like a huge party or something so you just like hey it's my birthday you wake up one day and you're just like it's my birthday but that's basically how i'm feeling today i don't have too much planned it's just we're going to a birthday brunch and think dinner tonight with my family um but i actually am working today which is kind of weird i didn't take off i don't know i didn't have the forethought to take off because i took off most of last week so i didn't want to take off an additional monday especially since mondays are super crazy with just like trying to deal with everything of the weekend and trying to set up a good schedule for the rest of the week so i am working for a little bit i'm gonna hop on my computer join a staff meeting and then do some work and then i'm probably gonna log off uh, and like just be on call in case anyone needs anything but I'm gonna get ready for brunch and then we're gonna head to brunch we're going to this nice place that I've never been to and I'm just excited we're going into the city and I haven't been into the city in a year I think a year I haven't been into the New York City in a year so yeah we're gonna do that but I'm super excited for today it's a beautiful day it's a nice 70 degrees with a wind chill so yeah I'm just excited there's so much serotonin going around and I'm excited to bring you along with me so <laughs>
I'm back from my little birthday escapades. Um, the first thing that we did was went to brunch after I did a little bit of work We went to brunch at this place called all's well And my brother was like looking at it on Yelp and he's like this place only has three stars and then we ate the food and it was phenomenal So don't always trust the reviews trust your gut the, the menu honestly looked fire and it just sounded really great Um, and it's a lot and near a lot of places that I like to eat So I kind of wanted to try something new and it was really good. So if you're ever in Brooklyn definitely go there but yeah, after we ate, we just did a little bit of shopping just because one of my favorite things to do when I actually have the chance to go into the city or into Brooklyn is to thrift because there's not a lot of good thrifting options in Minnesota or at least ones that I like. A lot of them in Minnesota are more on the expensive side, so I definitely do like to go thrifting whenever I am back home in New York City. So I'm just going to do a little haul because I love watching what people thrift and I didn't get too much today. I know I was like telling myself that I can go a little bit crazy because it, because it is my birthday um, and I did just recently get paid so I was like I can get go a little crazy but I actually even though I ended up trying on so many things I literally every store that I went to I tried on more than like five things I didn't end up getting a lot just because I've been more conscious with my shopping because I know that a lot of the pieces that I have in my closet have not been worn yet or are just sitting there so yeah so the first place that I went to I forgot the name of it but it was a little vintage store and I tried on a lot of things and they were really cute I just think now recently I haven't been happy with how things are looking on my body so I did try on a lot of things but I just didn't like the way they looked so I didn't end up purchasing them um, but I did get a few accessories which I'm actually really excited about because I've been wearing a lot of accessories lately so if you know me in real life you'll know that I love wearing like chunky colorful rings I always wear like really big obnoxious rings and I found some rings here and I'm gonna show you them the first one that I got is this cloud one and it's this chunky blue cloud one and it actually matches my nails I got my nails done yesterday for my birthday but I love this one I've only seen like chunky flower ones I've never seen like a cloud so I got that one and then the second one that I got is just this regular flower one and lighting's super bad right now, but like it's just this flower ring and again, I love flowers and love anything floral. Um, and then the next accessory that I got is this hair clip and this hair clip is actually from an Asian uh, owned brand called Chunks. I'll leave their Instagram in the description or on the screen right here, but I actually have three products from Chunks already, so when I saw that they were selling them, I like immediately bought another one i'm actually wearing a chunks hair clip right now i don't know if you can see it um it's a checkered hair clip but they have the best hair clips so i definitely recommend on to the clothes i realized that i'm actually washing something in the wash right now but i got a pair of like white corduroy jeans from lee jeans from a thrift store um but i can't show you that but the real thing that i'm super excited about again the lighting is like actually terrible here but i got this really cute dress from um beacon's closet i think we went to and it's just so cute i'm in love with it and it just looks really kind of weird it kind of looks shapeless on camera but it looks so cute on i think it's a nice like mini summer dress and it has this like halter top ish stuff but it's it just looks like this it kind of looks weird and very shapeless but it has these like drapey things on the outside and it's just very cute and very summery it makes me look like a lemon i like to say that um but yeah that's basically my haul i'm like kind of surprised with the things that i with how little i bought but also just very happy but with the things that i bought and i don't feel like overwhelmed with like a lot of things that i have to wear so yeah
I'm finally reading again, which is honestly a godsend after the past few weeks when I've just been too busy. I've like tried picking up books. I like forced myself to read books and they just never stuck and I ended up DNFing them because I had like events and then it was like one week in between reading a book and like a few pages. So anyway, I am currently reading Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe and I'm really enjoying it. This is a book that I actually purchased last summer and started reading it and for some reason it just didn't stick with me. Like I didn't end up finishing it. I think I got about 50 pages in before I like put it down and like never picked it up again but I thought I would revisit this one especially since it is a PI month and this is a sapphic AAPI book which I feel like we don't get enough of sapphic sapphic Asian books or like Asian sapphic characters you know what I mean or Asian sapphic romances so I really want to read this for that res representation and it takes place in San Francisco 1950s like queer historical fiction how much better can it get? But anyway, I just wanted to talk about something, of course, before I go to sleep because that's when like the most of my thoughts come out. And I'm definitely going to journal a little bit later because I kind of want to get this down on paper before therapy tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I've just been feeling really tired lately. And I've been doing a lot of testing as in like I'm trying to find the reason why I'm tired or the reason for my fatigue. And one, it's not COVID. <laughs> I know I've tested and it's not that I'm not getting enough sleep because I actually sleep quite a lot I think especially since school ended I've slept so much because I don't have to wake up for anything there's no reason to get up anymore so like I can sleep in but I can also sleep a little later but I end up sleeping a little early just because I am a lot older and I I value my sleeping time so but I've just been feeling really fatigued lately and tired and exhausted and I honestly after doing a lot more thinking I think it's just because of this just like inherent existential dread that I feel that I know I'm feeling every day when I have to get up and I'm like oh like I'm my own person now and I'm like not a student anymore so I have to like make my own schedule and I have to make my own breakfast and not go to the cafeteria anymore or like you know make my own deadlines because no teacher is gonna set them for me anymore so yeah these are just thoughts that I've been having and I've been dealing with and I know it's gonna be I know it's like obviously not gonna be like this forever so I just have to get used to it because currently I'm so used to like the feeling of like summer being like a total break from life um, because the real stuff is during the year you know like the stuff that you actually have to work for is during the school year and during the summer in between um, school years or semesters you could be free and like have fun and actually do stuff because you're like okay yeah if there's stuff that I need to do I'll like carry on throughout the school year but now it's like no like it's not summer vacation anymore it's like the rest of your life which is kind of scary and very just surreal to me that I am in that part of my life right now obviously the plan in the future is to go back to school for a another degree but I think now I'm just very in the in-between like obviously this gap year is kind of like you know fake it till you make it but also just like you know decide whether I want to go back to academia or this is like the rest of my life so we love existential thoughts right before bed but anyway I'm gonna get some sleep and then I have therapy tomorrow which I am so excited for I haven't seen my therapist in a month just because with everything going on and I kind of spread out my sessions a little bit more just because I felt like I was doing pretty good for a while um but she specializes in like life transitions and life changes so I think this will be really good to talk with her about. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited for therapy. I've never been like this excited and it's probably just because I haven't seen her in such a long time and talked to her. So yeah, something great to look forward to. But anyway, good night. I will see you tomorrow. We're dog sitting today. Look at our friends. This is Lily. This white one right here. Lily, come here, come here, come here. She's a little, uh, she's a little puffball. She looks like a marshmallow. And then this is Kai. Kai, okay. Kai, Kai, look how little excited boy. he is. He's a little boy. Hello. Hi, cutie.
Mexico. So I am back from a pretty long day in the city. I went back to the city again today Because I was kind of getting a little bit stir-crazy at home I think that's one of the it's one of the pros and cons of working remotely is Pro is that you can work from anywhere in the world and you can travel really as long as you have Wi-Fi and access to a computer to do emails and just like do your job essentially but then one of the cons is just that you lose that sort of physical community which as an introvert is not so important to me but still needs to be there does that make sense like I, I still need it to like function but I don't Never mind. I don't need it to function, but I still want it. I crave it sometimes. Does that make sense? So yeah, pros and cons, but I honestly really loved going to the city today. It was my first time going back into the city, like I said, since a year. So I had some anxieties as usual, but it was just fun to kind of explore new coffee shops. It's one of my favorite things. Like, it's honestly such a privilege, but if I spend my money on one thing, it is coffee. And I love going to new coffee shops, trying their coffee, trying cool drinks, and working there. It's just like trying to romanticize my work life by working at cute coffee shops. That's the goal. But one of my goals in 2022 or in 2023 actually since this new year is honestly coming sooner than later um, is to travel and I think I'm putting less pressure on myself to travel like outside of the states. I think a lot of us when we think of travel we think of like beaches and like out of the country and like going to different countries and exploring but for me I honestly haven't even explored much of the US to begin with so I kind of want to start there there's just so many places that I feel like have a lot of rich history and culture that I still haven't explored like I think I've went to some places and then didn't stay there for more than a week so I didn't really get to be immersed in like the city life or like the state's culture so I definitely want to do that so I'm going to be doing that a lot more I think this year and just working on the go especially since I might have to travel a lot for my job which is kind of exciting. I really do think it's a sham when people say that you have to know what you're going to do right out of college. I think it's nice obviously if you need the job security and you need financial security to have something lined up in terms of like a job. Yes, I totally agree. That's what I wanted for myself, but I think it's a sham when people say like out of college you need to know what you want to do for like the rest of your life. So I feel like some people put an emphasis on like the job you get out of college is like the job that you'll the industry you'll stay in for like the rest of your life which is just absurd to me because like I don't even know where I'm gonna be in five years much less a year so all I know is that like I want to do what I'm doing now and I want to explore my creativity and myself as a person so I'm not trying to like focus too much on like do I want a PhD do I want to go to grad school because I feel like the more I think about it the more it makes me not want to go does that make sense? So I feel like I'm just like pushing myself. 
Okay, the next thing before I forget is I finished Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. And this book is nothing like I've ever read before. And I think in the best way possible, just because I... I don't really read within the historical fiction genre, but I would say if you're like me and you're like kind of like opposed to historical fiction, like you just, it doesn't like interest you. you. Like you look at this book and you're like historical fiction, like that doesn't really interest me. I feel like you should still pick up this book and I'll tell you why. Because I feel like first of all, it is, it is historical fiction and it does dip its toes into some real events and cultural things that took place in history but I also think it has its own spin it's very fresh um, it follows very specific niche story within a time period that we historically know and culturally know as something else so that's why I really like this because like I knew quite a bit about like the 1950s and like the history because of like what we learn in school and what we learn in like I don't know US history but I didn't know about like the queer culture or like San Francisco as this hub for um, queer culture and, and this community of people so I really think that within this book I really enjoyed that there's a lot of aspects that I also really like I love books about found family and I think this definitely had that aspect um, this book is like I said it's historical fiction but I think you don't get lost too much in like the historicalness of it if that makes sense so like they have I think each chapter has these little timelines that really keep you on track for the historical nature of it because I feel like with historical fiction sometimes I get too hooked on like like what is happening like what is happening in history how is this like real like you know all those details but I think for this book it's just honestly a story that sometimes I just forgot was like set in a real time in history and also what I really appreciated in the end was the author's note where Melinda Lowe writes about the language, more about the 1950s, San Francisco, and then Chinatown and Chinese Americans, um, and basically the community and like the intersectionality of these communities. So I really enjoyed that. I really like historical fiction books that are not at least backed up with sources, but I think they are connections to like if you want to learn more about something, like if you really enjoyed something in this book, like there are resources and sources to look beyond it to read up more. Overall, really enjoy this book. I don't rate my books anymore, but I would highly recommend this. I a lot of my friends had been bothering me to read it before and I did not pick it up. So much to my chagrin, really loved it and I highly and, and like highly advise to you that you don't do the same as me and you don't wait till many years later to pick up this book. That is pretty much it for this vlog. I'm gonna wrap it up here just because I feel like I just put some clips in and it was honestly like 40 minutes long so I have to like cut it. But thank you so much for following me around through this week of being a recent graduate of remote work. Um, I hope to do more of these like weekly or even daily vlogs of what it's like to be on your gap year or what it's like to be a recent graduate who's still trying to just figure things out because I honestly think that's what I'm doing so I have a mix of like being really serious about my career but also just like being fun and lighthearted and exploring my 20s um so yeah it's a cute mix of that and thank you so much for sticking around I hope you watch my future videos and I will see you on my next one bye